good morning dear students today we'll be discussing about discrete fourier transform so a real time scenario is real time signals have to be actually converted into digital signals for being processed into a computer right a computer cannot directly process uh, real time signals which are continuous time in nature hence a system is required where all these continuous time real time signals are converted there is a process of conversion of this continuous time signal into digital signals not only does this perform conversion but it also performs analysis and filtering operations so the end product which is a digital signal has to be fed into the digital computer for processing right so discrete fourier transform is one type of uh, processing technique which is used under this signal processing system right so uh, any type of signal is usually represented in both time domain as well as frequency domain why do we go for frequency domain representation this is because the amount of information that is available in frequency domain is enormous when compared to time domain moreover when a signal is represented in frequency domain there is more room for analysis and transformation right so to begin with let us see a flow right so what signal we have taken here is a continuous time and aperiodic signal right you can look into the signal which is continuous time as well as aperiodic right so this uh, signal instead of just keeping it time domain we need to convert it into or we need to represent it into frequency domain so for that the process or transformation used is called as continuous time fourier transform right so we get the signal x of j omega please remember that both these signals are same but the representations are in two different domains so x of j omega is the fourier transform of x of t and if you see the fourier transform of this signal will look like this where the entire information contained in this signal is represented in just one particular pulse right so this is continuous time fourier transform and the nature of this signal is continuous time and aperiodic right but our ultimate aim is to convert my continuous time signal into digital signal right so we know or you would have studied earlier what is the process for converting a time domain into uh, discrete uh, discrete time signal so what is the technique that, that is used the technique that was used is sampling and quantization so when you do sampling and quantization you will be getting a discrete signal this discrete signal so when you perform sampling and quantization on this uh, signal you will be getting a discrete signal x of n and the nature of this signal will be aperiodic since this signal was aperiodic right so equivalently the same discrete signal which is represented in time domain should also be represented in frequency domain hence the transformation that is applied is called as discrete time fourier transform so when you perform the transformation what you get is x of e power j omega which is continuous and periodic in nature right just observe the relationship between these two here you have just information in one pulse right whereas when you perform a uh, dtft you will be having this continuous time fourier transform information which is replicable for infinite amount of time right hence it is called as continuous and periodic right so this type of the uh, main uh, po point here is why do we have to go for dft right so let us see on the same discrete time signal if you perform another uh, equivalent uh, transform called as discrete fourier transform on the same discrete time signal you will be getting a spectrum called as x of k right observe the nature of this x of k it is discrete and periodic right so you can see that both dtft and dft are the frequency representation or the spectrum representation of your discrete time signal right then why do we need to go for dft why wouldn't we have stopped with dtft right the point here is the dtft is may be used for analytical operations or analytically it is convenient but you can observe that the information or the number of 
points contained in this Fourier transform is infinite, right? Because you can see that the spectrum is continuous, right? So if you take a specific uh, frequency, maybe from 0 to 2 pi if you take, you can see that this uh, number of points is said to be infinite, right? So when you try to store this infinite points into a memory, it is impossible, right? You cannot st uh, store infinite amount of information into memory. So you need to control convert this infinite number of information into finite number of information. So that is achieved using discrete Fourier transform. So you can see the difference between this spectrum and this spectrum. Symbolically both are same but here the information is distributed at a finite number of points. right? So each of these finite number of points represent that information and this information can be conveniently used to uh, be stored in memory and it you can process or filter or analyze or play around this signal. That is the reason why we go for DFT for practical systems. right? There is yet another transform called as fast Fourier transform. Fast Fourier transform is just an advanced version of DFT where it performs faster computation when the number of in finite points are going to be increased. Right? So, uh, I hope you are clear with about why we need to study about DFT. So, finally to put an end into this, uh, you can see in the real time signal that uh, X of T has been converted into X of N and all these frequency domain representation are used to analyze and play around the signals and they are, can be used for filtering and for N number of uh, operations where they can extract the information. Right? But however, now here in time domain, this discrete time signal has to be converted into digital signal. So, how will it be converted? You apply the process called as coding, right? So, when you apply this process called as coding, that is any discrete information will be coded to produce the corresponding digital signals that will be processed by means of this computer, right? So, having this basics in mind, we will go into uh, DFT. So, before going actually into DFT, let us take uh, analogy for reference in order to understand what is happening inside a DFT, right? So, here for example, uh, consider that you are having a smoothie, right? A smoothie which is a combination of different fruits, right? So, as and when you drink the particular smoothie, you will not know what is the what are the fruits that are present, right? But if you are interested in knowing the recipe of that smoothie, then you need to know what are the components or ingredients present in that particular smoothie. Only when you know the ingredients and the amount of ingredients can you recreate the smoothie again. Right. So now you consider that this smoothie is said to be your actual signal which is represented in time domain. Right. You consider this is your discrete time signal X of N. Right. Smoothie. Right. Now in this discrete time signal I want to find what are all the frequency components present in that discrete time signal and in each frequency component how much amount of data or information or amplitude is distributed together all together. So to do that what you do is I am going to apply this smoothie to four filters right so what are these four filter banana filter so this banana filter what it does is this filter just produces an output which is going to be banana alone and it specifies that it is banana and also specify how much amount of uh, uh, banana component is present in that particular smoothie right for example i am drinking the smoothie for uh, uh, two minutes then this banana amount will specify how much amount of banana is present in my smoothie for every instant of time for that every 5 minutes for every discrete instance of time how much banana is present in that particular smoothie that will be represented by this banana component. Similarly, the same thing will go hold for orange, milk and water. So, every, every filter will produce an output, will specify what is that particular ingredient and how much of that ingredient has been present through the entire time period. Right? So, this can be compared to, to your signal. So, this is my discrete time signal. I want to identify what are the frequency components present in my signal. So, the frequency components, for example, let me take this as 1 hertz frequency, 2 hertz frequency, 
3 hertz frequency and uh, for example this is 4 hertz frequency right so banana is 1 hertz orange is 2 hertz milk is 3 hertz and water is 4 hertz so if I, I apply the particular filter here the filter stands for the DFT filter right so I will identify what is my 1 hertz component 2 hertz component 3 and 4 hertz component apart from identifying the frequency component each and every frequency you will be able to tell what information has been present that frequency information has been present over the entire time signal so that is also present over here right so this transformation is nothing but discrete Fourier transformation so what type of filter that you are going to apply so that you get a transformed uh, uh, signal in uh, frequency domain is called as uh, frequency transformation right so now I, as I told you you have to start with a time based signal right any signal is filtered into a filtered into a bunch of circular parts right usually we tend to think of signals just as a one dimensional sine wave right but in reality it is not so if you want to get more information you can just uh, refer into this link that I have given over here so I would just try to tell that uh, information is not just represented in terms of uh, one dimensional sinusoidal wave whereas each frequency component is represented in terms of a circular ingredient or circular representation so that alone you take away from this particular thing right so finally you can tell you you will be able to collect the full recipe that is the full signal information and each circular ingredient representing each frequency component right so now here so now I, I would like to explain about or give just an idea about what is that uh, circular ingredient so as I told you you can represent uh, one particular frequency information in two ways either you can represent it simply as see this is one particular point in my uh, real axis and imaginary axis this frequency information can be represented either in a rectangular form or it can be represented in terms of polar form right rectangular form means here you, this is cos x right plus i sin x will represent this form it is in rectangular form similarly you can represent the same complex exponential signal in terms of e power i x which represents nothing but the radius of the signal in this case it is 1 and then the angle subtended by this particular signal so you can say that this is the angle subtended by it and it is represented also by e power i x right so the information contained in this particular frequency is expressed in terms of complex sinusoid right so when you plot so you can uh, assume this to be the finite number of points each and every point represents the information that is stored right in each and every point you will have a particular information that is stored so the takeaway is the Fourier transform is about circular paths and Euler formula is a clever way to generate one right so now we are going to discuss about two equations over here one is called as uh, these are the two primary equations that we will be applying in all our formulas, formulas. so this will be uh, called as the analysis equation and uh, the next one is called as synthesis equation right so what is analysis equation the analysis equation from the name itself you know you are going to identify or you are going to analyze the signal in the frequency domain right and this is called as synthesis equation that is synthesis equation if you want to return back from the frequency uh, spectrum back to the time domain in a uh, signal then it is called as synthesis equation right so here you can just analyze this uh, particular uh, um, uh, equation so xk represents that particular frequency component that you are obtaining after applying dft right so for example 1 kilohertz component 2 kilohertz component so for example under 1 hertz component what all you will do 1 hertz component how much it is distributed into the entire time period right that is why you are going for the summation so in this x of n signal each and every component of this 1 hertz how much it is distributed from 0 to n minus 1 so in that n finite points how much of this 1 hertz signal is present that is why you go for the summation and then e power minus j 2 pi k n by n where 
I as I told you, every point will be represented as a complex sinusoid. So, this is contribution to this frequency from each spike. So, each component of x of n is represented in terms of a complex exponential signal. That is what is given here. Similarly, and uh, how many k components? The value of k will be ranging from 0, 1, 2 up to n minus 1, right? The number of finite points will depend upon the number of, the number of frequency components k will depend upon the number of finite finite points. So, 0 to n minus 1 means you will be having n number of finite points. Similarly, the other formula is which is used is if you want to return back from DFT back to discrete time, then you have to apply this formula. Summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x k e power j 2 pi k n divided by n. Right. So, here you can see n is the number of time samples. That is I told you right you have discrete number of points. So, that is the number of time samples small n is the current sample we are considering. So, in your uh, discrete time signal, you will be for example, if you have 10 samples, each and every sample is taken as n. You can represent your discrete time signal either in this notation xn or it can be represented as x of n. Then k, k is the current frequency, for example, 1 hertz or 2 hertz or whatever we are talking about. So, inside a signal, you will be represented up to, up to what? 0 to n minus 1 frequency components, right? Then, x k or x of k will represent the amount of frequency k in the signal, right? So, it can be represented either as x k or x of k, right? So, please put a pause onto this uh, video slide and the same equation that we have taken here, I have represented over here and this is very important for you to solve the problems. The analysis equation and the synthesis equation, this is called as uh, DFT, discrete Fourier transform in equation and this is called as IDFT, inverse discrete Fourier transform equation. So, you note down that the value of k will range from 0 to n minus 1. Here again, the value of n will range from 0 to n minus 1 right so here now let us move on to the problems right compute the four point dft of the data sequence x of n is equal to 0 comma 2 comma 4 comma 6 right so this is the discrete time signal that has been given to me i need to compute what is the four point dft of the sequence right so we need to just apply the formula analytical aspects of this is very simple you just need to be mathematically strong so x of k formula k 0 to 1 min n minus 1 they have asked please note down that they have asked here uh, 4 point dft so 4 point dft means the number of points that we are going to consider is going to be 4 so n value is 4 right so if n value is 4 k value will be 0 1 2 and 3 so now so, you can relate it now, right? You have four frequency components. For example, you can relate it. 0 hertz component, 1 hertz component, 2 hertz component and 3 hertz component just for understanding. So, at each each frequency component, you are going to find out what is the information. So, at k equal to 0, x of 0 equal to summation n equal to 0 to 3, right? Because in the formula it is 4 minus 1, 3. x of n e power minus j 2 pi in the place of k it is 0. So, when you simplify, it will be x of n e power 0. So, summation n equal to 0, 3 x of n, right? So, now you can know x of 0 is 0, x of 1 is 2, x of 2 is 4 and then x of 3 is 6. So, now you can write x of 0 plus x of 1 plus x of 2 plus x of 3. So, when you simplify, you will be getting x of 0 equal to 12. So, similarly, next you have to find at k equal to 1. Right. So, when you substitute, I think you can just do it by yourself and then verify. You just need to substitute and find out the values which is as simple as that. So, k equal to 1. So, you will be getting e power j pi by 2. To simplify this complex exponential, you can always apply Euler's formula. So, you can expand the summation. It's a summation which can be expanded and each and every complex exponential you apply Euler's formula and simplify you will be getting the value of x of n. Similarly, proceed for k equal to 2, right? Same procedure, just apply you will be getting x of 2 equal to minus 4. Then we have k equal to 3. So, x of 3 you are getting as minus 4 minus 4j. So, finally, x of k that we have obtained is this answer, right? So, this represents our spectrum, 
right so at each frequency what is the information contained so that is what we are obtaining in spectrum practically when you do it using your matlab or scilab scilab you will be able to see how this frequency spectrum of this particular signal looks like let us take one more example here we are going to compute the eight point dft of the signal right so uh, you should be always uh, in exam point of view uh, you will be getting uh, four point or two point four point or eight point dft so uh, sequence x of n equal to cos 0 0.25 pi n so why this example has been taken is in the previous example x of n uh, the discrete values were given but here x of n is given as a function so first you need to find out what is that x of n right only if you know the amplitudes you can proceed with the problem so since we have got given n equal to 8 right so number of samples that we have to take is also going to be 8 so i have to calculate x of uh, first i have to determine the data sequence x of n right so find x of 0 so how will you find x of 0 very simple substitute n equal to 0 cos 2 pi in the place of n 0 it will be cos 0 1 so x of n when you substitute 1 cos 0.25 pi n value is 1 so substitute you will be getting 0 0.707 similarly find x of 2 and x of 3 now 4 5 6 and 7 from this you can find what is my discrete sequence x of n so for this discrete sequence x of n you have to apply your dft so find dft x of k 8 point dft n equal to 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right since it's 8 point dft capital n equal to 8 so n equal to 0 to 7 so again following just the same formula x of k value of k is 0 to 7 right and here uh, i'm just since we know the value of n is equal to 8 we are substituting the summation 0 to 7 and 8 k values so now for each and every k value you have to find the frequency component so k equal to 0 you perform the simplification you will be getting k equal to 1 you can put a pause on the video do it by yourself and you can verify and k equal to 2 k equal to 3 k equal to 4 k equal to 5 same procedure you just need to uh, sum it up by applying Euler's identity perform mathematical calculations k equal to 6 k equal to 7 finally you get this x of k value so this is a method in which uh, you have to find the dft so as a practice you try to you have to do these two problems computing four point dft uh, for minus one to the power of n and uh, sin n pi pi 2 right so next class we will be seeing about how to compute this dft using matrix method thank you students